Greetings, fiends. Tonight we take our first foray into the German horror punk scene. So crank those stereos to 11, and let's get into some Crimson Ghosts, here on the Midnight Chain. The Crimson Ghosts, one of Fiend Force Records' kind of flagship bands. Uh, I mean, obviously, the label was started by uh, the lead singer of The Other, but uh, the Crimson Ghosts were easily one of the uh, first bands that really hit home. Um, today we're going to be talking about their second LP, though. Uh, their first LP just kind of flew under the radar, especially in the States. Uh, the second one hit home, and it was, you know, we had the, a double dose of Crimson Ghosts by the time we found out about them. Uh, the... So, let's get into a little backstory about the Crimson Ghosts if you don't know anything about this band. Uh, the band was formed in 2001 as a Misfits cover band. Uh, there are a few stories, uh, uh, you know, you're going to find horror punk bands that come out. Uh, they get together as Misfits tribute bands, and this is probably one of the... F uh, one of the first big story, like bands that I knew of that got together as a uh, Misfits tribute band and then really just hammered it up, hammered everything home with their originals. Uh, Plan 9 from California also did that, and people rave about that band. So, formed in 2001, first record came out in 2003, uh, no. 2005. They were signed to Fiend Force Records in 2003, and their first record came out just after. This record was released September 1st, 2006. So somewhere 2003-2004 uh, was where their first record was released. Um, so Carpe Mortem. Carpe Mortem. That's what we're talking about here. So, firstly, this is the copy that I got of Carpe Mortem on Interpunk. I got, the, I got both the first and second records together on Interpunk.com, and uh, at that point in time, I really wasn't getting any vinyl for like, I was buying vinyl just only for horror punk. I was pretty much only getting the Blitzkin stuff. So, let's take a, a moment right now and get some close ups of the records. We'll All right. The Crimson Ghost Carpe Mortem. Really kick ass, balls to the wall German horror punk. The guys in the band look really cool. Um, it definitely, like I said, it definitely has that German kind of industrial uh, vibe going on to it. Uh, the music's not industrial, but like it's got that German vibe to it, and a lot of stuff is very industrial, like in atmosphere and art when it comes out of there. Um, the cover artwork, whereas iconic is all hell when it comes to horror punk. Uh, it doesn't feel very, it feels very computerized to me. It probably was, it was probably Photoshop. Um, really well done Photoshop, but uh, it's not my favorite style on the planet. Uh, but it does represent the music well. I mean, it just rips your face off, and that just kind of... I, I, I like the first record's artwork just a touch better. So there's the actual CD itself. And... Just that uh, slightly seen undead horns sticking up. And uh, all you can see is me in the glare. Yep, Cargo Records was the distribution on that. Now we'll get to the sweet LP. Back this up just a touch. That cover art definitely looks better bigger. 
smaller it looks very generic uh, or not generic but uh, very uh, photoshopped this feel the, like bigger it feels a little more organic it still has the same complaints I made before but I, I think I like it better bigger and then the back is pretty much the same without my head sticking in it and you see the old devil Lee unreleased vinyl only bonus track always drove, drove drove me crazy back in the day with bands throwing bonus tracks on the vinyl I mean like not like I'm not gonna buy the vinyl anyway but so then we've got all the lyrics pictures of the band on the, the slip sleeve and just kick butt green vinyl undead middle finger zombie horns definitely if you can find it get it so you know like I just showed we have just just absolutely gorgeous green vinyl I uh, except for some of the Crimson Ghost 45s I think they were only released their records on black or green up until uh, Generation Gore which is their last record. They've just recently announced a new record, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so their second record, it was the 30th release on Fiend Force. And by this point, Fiend Force had really gotten their, what they were doing down, so they knew what to release and how to release it. Um, the CD, probably one of the first ones on Fiend Force that I know of that's enhanced and has a music video for Somewhere in a Casket, so that's pretty neat. Um, I know none of the pressing info for this album. Um, I would imagine that the LP is probably 500. I, that would be my guess. I'll, a good chunk of the Fiend Force vinyl was all 500 or less. Um, as far as I know, there are no represses. The CD, uh, hard to tell how many were pressed of this. At the time when this was released, uh, CDs were still being sold a lot. I mean, not like bands still aren't releasing CDs, but stores aren't carrying them, so most likely bands are probably pressing a whole lot less than they used to. So, uh, the good thing about the LP, though, if I didn't mention this before, is that the LP has an extra track compared to the CD. And that's, uh, the song is called Old Evil, Old Devil Lee. And, uh, personal opinion, it's kind of a ho-hum, uh, minute 38 rocker track. Um, kind of like a fast punk song. It, I mean, it's just, it's the Crimson Ghosts. It's what they do. So you ask, what's the music like? Well, it's fast. It's heavy. Uh, and when I say heavy, I'm talking Misfits, Earth AD era, or, and, uh, you know, 80s Sick of It All. It's got that real heavy vibe to it, but it's melodic. Um, I mean, you're gonna. Most horror punk is melodic. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, so, melodic. It, it's melodic hardcore. I mean, for a lack of better terms, melodic hardcore with just slathered horror imagery and lyrics. So, uh, talking about the Crimson Ghost. So, I, I obviously I've never seen the band. Uh, Jackal. I, uh, the guitarist did at least one tour with Blitzkid over here, but I think it was one of their larger tours, like towards the apparitional era, and I don't remember seeing him. I was in grad school. I wasn't actually able to get out to a lot of shows because I was living not close to where I needed to be to go see shows. And uh, so they, they, the Crimson Ghost never been stateside. 
Uh, they've done a plethora of European tours, played over there. You know, I mean, they're, they're obviously from Germany and they still they do their thing there, but they've never gotten over here. So really, all I've got is you know, I, I know that they're you know friends with Blitzkid. Um, in fact, I think uh, one of the guys was at Goolsby's wedding here just a few months ago, but that's neither here nor there. But, you know, it's not like they, they don't get over here. They just haven't brought the band over. I'm hoping on this next uh, tour cycle, they, like this next record, they might be able to, you know, hop the pond and get over to uh, the States. So, in two, when I'm, in 2004 and five was when we really started discovering, and by we, I mean the general Dayton, Cincinnati scene. I mean, there's not exactly a lot of us that were like hardcore into this style of music. So we were kind of passing band information around left and right to each other. And the Crimson Ghost popped out of all that, along with the other, um, you know, the guys from Blitz Kids, since they had done a European tour, uh, we found out about who they were playing with, who was on Fiend Force Records, and then that whole thing just started growing. It was a, just a little hype engine. And that was when I picked up the, the, uh, the two records uh, that were released. Interpunk was, like, Fiend Force was good about getting their stuff to Interpunk, which was probably the best way, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago to buy a lot of this stuff. They didn't get a lot of it, and it sold out fairly quickly. Um, but it was that that was where I got mine and it was uh, it was good it was definitely different from what we were used to over here is a lot heavier um, German bands tend to do that they just <laughs> German bands get heavy um, yet again the nature of the beast kind of thing uh, melodic but they definitely had that down tuned uh, hardcore vibe but just it was a good mix but I'm it's kind of like, uh, for a lack of better analogies, it's like a V8 engine. You know, a, a V8 engine in a car does one damn thing. It sounds a lot, it sounds really loud and goes really fast. That's what it does. And that's kind of what the Crimson Ghosts do. You know, they, they just, they crunch and croon and just rip your face off. You know, it, I mean, this is this is a really great uh, record. Their first record is a little weird. Um, it to me, it, it doesn't have the, it doesn't really have the. It's got the darkness and the horror aspect. It doesn't have quite the catchy songs uh, that Carpe Mortem has. Um, this you can tell the songwriting has gotten way more refined. They've gotten way way better at what they're doing, which, I mean, this is a band that just gets better with age. The songwriting just gets better and better album per album. This is where they really hit uh, their first stride. I mean, you have uh, the first single somewhere in a casket with a corresponding music video, which was released on CD and. I believe you, YouTube might have been the first place that I ever saw it, because I don't believe I ever watched it on the, the CD. Uh, and you had, you know, a lot of face ripping songs uh, from Beyond, Midnight Mayhem, really good tunes. Uh, Night of the Dead Prom Queen is another, God forbid, a, a horror punk trope that won't die. Is every fucking band on the planet needs to have a song about a prom queen either going insane or getting killed or turned into a zombie. Either way, high school prom apparently, I mean it was a thing in the 50s and it has just carried on except in, instead of you know continuing to mainstream it got sucked into the horror punk engine and uh, really the pogo punk engine because a lot of the pogo punk scene they have this weird hang up of high school and but anyway they the that song's pretty good it's sl it's one of the slower songs on the record and it's really good it really flexes the diversity of uh this band um but for the most part the album just tears your face off i mean it, 
it's melodic hardcore. Um, really good stuff. And you know what? It's out of all the records that I have covered on this channel, this is probably one of the easier ones to come by. Um, the LP, if you check eBay, it's always going to be overpriced. That's just, that's eBay in general. eBay is overpriced. Um, but if you get on Discogs, um, I, I've seen it go, the CD go for 10 bucks or less. Uh, in fact, I think you can get the LP, or at least a couple of the LPs. Um, this one, this one I bought directly from the band. And it cost me 10 bucks, maybe. Um, I'm pretty sure they still have copies of Generation 4 and maybe Leaving the Tomb, which is their first record. I'm not sure. Check, check, the, check their, their web store. They've, uh, they've got some stuff. It seems like people don't buy their merch quite as much as other bands. Beyond me why, they're really, really great. But I, Discogs has the CDs for maybe 10 bucks, 10, 12 bucks. LPs for relatively cheap, something under $20. Uh, eBay, I, I, I saw this, uh, this record go for 25 It's not unbuyable. You, you can find it easily. So, I mean, if you really, if you dig deep into horror punk and you really are getting into it, it's a fun band to pick up. Uh, if, if you're into hardcore, it might be a good one to pick up for some a, a horse of a different flavor if you're from France and eat horses. And so, you know, uh, it hasn't been repressed. So, I mean, we're going on, what, 12 years ago that it was released? It hasn't been repressed. So, yeah, that is what it is. It, it would be nice to see Fiend Force poke its little head back up. I mean, I know the guys from the other are busy... They're on bigger labels. I think they're on Nuclear Blast now, or Napalm, one of the two. And they are just too busy and with that, with their own band, than to really run. Like, Fiend Force kind of went out of business years ago. So, if you get it, if you can pick it up. If, if you want to, if you want to deep dive on some horror punk, you know, that, that had some pretty good distribution and is in just it's a really good music uh pick this one up you're, you're definitely going to get your uh spooky time with it and uh not you're not going to waste your time that's for sure so yeah crimson ghosts midnight chamber long live the horror